I'll just give you a minute or two to think about the, the name of uh, the sermon today. And um, so the person who can uh, guess or the person that, that can actually tie together why I use that and what the sermon is about, please come to me afterwards. I'll, uh, what are we eating today? Curry and rice. And if you don't eat curry and rice, I'll, I'll stick you for something else. Amen. So, so that's the mystery of this morning is why would I use something like No Name? And for those of you who don't know, that's the Pick and Pay's No Name brand. I just put it on top. So, And uh, just a word of congratulations to all the parents who dedicated their children this morning. And uh, for those of you who are here to support them also, that's great. Thank you. We welcome you. And it's awesome to be with you and to be in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. So if anything seems a bit funny, it is. We are funny people. The Bible says we're peculiar people. We're a holy nation. Amen. And I like that. Thank you. Amen. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to share this morning with you guys. I don't, know if, I don't know if you've ever, I didn't get a quote, I didn't get that quote out of any book or anything. I just think the Lord laid on it. The greatest act of worship and that's what we did. We sang this morning as part of our worship. The greatest act of worship we can bring is to obey Jesus through Holy Spirit in fulfilling His mission. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 Yaku, I'm so happy that we're on the, on the screen this morning. I can't tell you. I've got like a bubbly feeling because I can read everything. So we've been having a font and a what's-his-name problem. So isn't it awesome? But I see Pastor Kervis is not right yet, so we'll, we'll work on that in this week. Amen. So I'm just saying that because you guys look very serious now. You shouldn't be serious. We've just praised and worshipped the Most High. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I had a few interesting conversations this, this week, and I think those people that I had the conversations with, I'm just looking if they're here or not. If you, uh, um, please, I'll, I'll be, uh, um, you know, it's anonymous, and I'm not, I'm not using the stories that you told me to by any it's just God speaks to us through the body. Amen. So when somebody speaks to me, when somebody comes to see me, I listen to them and I try and find out if there's, if there's truth in it. Because I'm sure that everybody, bar a few people that are here this morning, are about the kingdom of God. Okay. So I'm the only one here. But it's okay. Then I'll preach to myself. I don't mind. So I saw, I saw, I saw one of uh, uh, my brothers this week, and we had a good chat. And you know, so what is the what is the most logical question you ask somebody if you don't see them that often? How how are you? Is, is it just me? Who gaat it, broer? Who gaat it met jou? And then the answer, if it's Afrikaans, is "Akani klani." And then you know, some people say, "No, it's well." And then obviously the you know, you come with a a little bit of a round, roundabout. You, you, you chat about, you know, the birds and the bees and the sycamore trees, and then when you get to the end, then you actually ask the question you want to answer. Brother, how are you doing spiritually? Good question. Not. Was it a religious one? So the answer was a very, very good one because my brother answered me, and he said to me, no, um, things are well with me and the Lord. I'm, I'm, my relationship with God is good. And then I said to him, and you're calling? No, um, you know, not so good. Anybody else that experience? Well, at least there are one or two honest people there. Thanks, Rainy. I love you, my boot. So, if we would apply that logic to our wives, do you think we'd still be living in the homes with our wives? <laughs> Just a question. I don't know about you guys, but, you know, God loves me unconditionally, but my wife's got some conditions, eh? Gloe for me. I've got to perform. Is it just me? Of course you've got to perform. God made you to perform. He made us to perform. We, and and we, we like that little weaver bird, eh? Who's seen the little weaver bird? What's the weaver bird in Afrikaans? By Geel Fulki. Funk. Okay. So the little weaver bird, the male, what does he do? I mean, they're a craft sake. Can you see he's half the size of the woman, eh? I work hard. 
And he's just building that nest and he's doing everything and then she just comes and she breaks it down. So it's by design. It's no problem. So guys, I'm talking to you this morning because I think we've repented of everything. Amen. Who's clean? <laughs> you must help me here, guys. You guys are a little bit... Okay. We've repented of everything except one thing and that's why I'm here this morning. Praise God. So in any case, so we chatted, and we chatted about this, and, you know, it was a good conversation because we, you know, it wasn't that, that, that I was nasty or angry or, you know, when you're a young Christian, and then you angle a little bit, and you sit there, to, oh, although I still do that with Henry, but, but he's different, so I've got to give him a little bit more stick, you know, because he's, he's, his uh, skin's a bit thicker. So Henry, I've got to angle a bit, but the rest of you guys, I, I'm, what I say is what I mean. Nice coke. Amen. So, so I'm, and I mean that. And it was a very good conversation. But, you know, I think the church is there at the moment. We are relationally actually in a good space with God. But we're missing our calling. Now, I want to ask you this question. Because, you know, um, I got this revelation very late. What is the cross that you must bear every day? Jesus said, if any man come after me. Let him deny himself and let him um, take up his cross and follow me. He who loses his life for my sake will gain it, and he who keeps his life will lose it. So what do you guys think your cross is? No, it's not your wife. That's a joke. It's not your boss. It's not your children. What is your cross? Think about that. Because what am I taking up every day? What makes my life tough? Because I mean, I take it when Jesus said, if any man come and let him take up his cross daily and follow me. And that's what a disciple is, guys. A disciple is nothing other than a learner. We've, we've, we make these, these, these huge definitions about what a disciple is. No, that oak is a disciple. No, no, he's a learner. A disciple is somebody that is teachable and that believes that he can learn something in whatever thing. So, so I believe that I'm a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Does that mean I'm more spiritual than you? No. Does that mean that I know more verses than you? No. Does that mean that, I, that I'm, I'm sanct um, my sanctification process is further than yours? Maybe, maybe not. But I'm still a learner. And so this is an awesome scripture for us this morning. And I'm going to have to put on my glasses because I can't read there or here. So I think I'm going to have to go and see the optometrist again. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may run swiftly and be glorified. Listen to what he says. That the word of the Lord may run swiftly. What does that imply? That implies that it's not just about him and Jesus. But he's doing something with his salvation. He's doing something with what God has given him. He's running with a vision. And guys, for, the, for most of us, that means we're running after Pastor Quibus's vision. Not mine. Uh, another interesting conversation I had the other night is with, an, with another frustrated person in cell that was telling me about, you know, we're not doing what we should be doing, and we're not doing, and what about this, what about I said, listen, hey, I'm following that man. I don't always agree with him. Although, as I get older, I agree more and more and more with him. I wonder why. But in any case, but it's his vision. God gave him a vision. And I want to tell you something. It, his vision is from God, whether you believe it or not. So the only thing you've got to ask yourself if you are in this house is, should you be here or not? And if you are here, you are not here. Guys, listen, Satan doesn't mind when you sing to, to Jesus on Sundays. He doesn't mind if you sing to Jesus on Sundays. What he's very, very afraid of is that you wake up on Monday morning and you start spreading the gospel. And you start living like Jesus. And you start giving, laying down your life and saying no to certain things and yes to other things. Then Satan comes against you. But when you sing and you get Holy Spirit Shabbat Shabbat on a Sunday, he doesn't mind. Because we're all holy in here. Think about that.
I almost made that the, uh, the name of the sermon, by the way. SOS. What does that mean? Somebody? Save our souls. I always used to think that. It doesn't mean that. Did you know that? I found that out now, by the way. So, I could, you know. so it's actually Morse code. It's the, it's the uh, emergency signal in Morse code. And if you look at the bottom there, I've got those little dee 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 dee. So the actual code for, listen, this is a distress signal, whether you're in a ship or, or wherever, is actually the letters are the same as SOS, but it's not save our souls or save our ship. But we all know that, amen, it's universal. SOS, why would I use that? Why would I use that term here this morning? A distress signal. Guys, there's a distress signal. There's really a distress signal. And I want to say to you, that distress signal is not coming from within the body of Christ. That distress signal is coming from the world. Listen, man. Everybody, everybody doesn't know what is going on. Everybody is completely at their wit's end. Everybody is afraid. And they're sending out SOS signals. And those SOS signals are visits to the doctor. Those SOS signals are Visits to the psychologist, visit to the marriage counselor, visits to the school because the children don't want to do what they're told. There are, an, there are SOS signals going on every day. And here we are on a Sunday morning singing to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords as if, as if we are, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong in our lives. Everything is perfect. Because it is. Amen. But you be watchful. Paul is speaking to Timothy. In all things. Endure afflictions. And do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. We were having a chat on Wednesday morning. I have a lot of chats. It's my, my job is to chat with people. And um, we were having a talk, myself and, and the pastors, about something's missing in cell at the moment. Whose experience is that? You can raise your hand. Something's missing. Who have you got saved in a cell? In other words, who had your first encounter in a cell? Raise your hand. Okay. So my other brother that I spoke to this week said to me, we are not a cell church anymore anymore pastor we are a church with cells and I started thinking about that because that bothers me because I've always told people you know you get a lot of churches with cell but you get very few cell churches and why would a church be classified as a cell church well the first thing is because most of the people are in cell as opposed to Sundays and there are very few churches who have more people in their cells than on a Sunday morning and I actually don't know where we are now but because of COVID, things have changed. The demographics of our, of, our, of our church have changed radically. And I would have hoped this morning that there would be a few more people here this morning that had, been, had the encounter with, with the Lord in, in, in a cell. Because I think there are a few things missing, but the most important thing that I see that is missing is new people. And well, there's one person that agrees. Who? Thank you. Guys, you know, we, 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 the other day I realized we, in a, we, we were in a spot of bother when we invited a new couple to our cell and everybody was just carrying on. They didn't, I mean, they were just carrying on chit-chatting. They weren't even focused on the new people. Now there's something wrong there, guys. If you come, and, and, and the, same, the same goes for when we, when we get together on Sunday mornings. If you are just here for you, I think you need to reevaluate your walk with the Lord. And I'm not, listen, I'm not hitting on you. Listen to me. I'm, I'm, I'm loving on you this morning. I want to tell you something. There is nothing greater on this planet. There is no f greater form of worship, as I said just now, that when we're obedient to the Spirit of God, when Holy Spirit, listen, man, 
I'm talking about this stuff because it's applicable to me. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not preaching down on you. I'm not telling you that you need to do something. On Friday afternoon, I, I left the practice because I want to go and prepare and get myself all holy for today. Not that I felt unholy, but you know what I'm saying. So you've got to prepare to speak to people about the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, it's always like that. Eh? When you don't have time to do something, God wants you to do something. So as I get out of Golf Park, there's this guy standing. And it's like, I mean, this guy and I, we've had a relationship for, I don't know how many years. The first time I picked him up was when I'd just gotten a brand new Land Rover. Day three, and guess what? I had to pick him up in an Alsatian with him. Yeah. Yeah. But I picked him up nevertheless. So like Friday, I didn't have time. So as I drive past him, I've got my thumb. I'm, he's going like this, and I'm going like this to him. And even though I'd carried on driving, I knew that I wasn't going to get to the turn and I was going to turn around. But I still drove because I thought maybe the feeling will go away. <laughs> Listen to me, guys, on a serious note. God doesn't need me. He doesn't. And I knew when I turned around, I knew that God had sent somebody else to pick that guy up. It's not lacquer. Listen, that's not lacquer. Because God wanted me to be obedient there. Okay. So before you get into a really bad space, because, it, I mean, that's, this, is, this is how incredible God is. So I turn back, and as I get, get to the guy, he's getting into another car. Ach, here I help my nets of belief. Can't you do it differently? Can't we just do these things on Sunday and Tuesday nights? It's easy. And let me work when I need to work. And as I drove, and, and by the way, he was the second guy. The first guy was standing, uh, a black guy was standing about, about 50 meters on this side. So I said, okay, Lord, I'll pick him up. So I picked him up. <laughs> what a nice young gentleman. Tabo. Tabo lives in Mayton Park. Man, I enjoyed having a conversation with Tabo. And I know that I'm going to meet Tabo again. You see, God even uses my mistakes. <laughs> Listen, you didn't, miss the, you didn't miss the boat or miss the ball or drop the ball. And it's all over. Listen, he knew you were going to drop the ball. He's outside of time. God doesn't need me. And, if, and, and, and listen, when you, when you do it the next morning, it's too late. <laughs> Anybody here? It doesn't help you say to your wife you're sorry the next morning. It's too late. And I say And you're gonna pay. I see the men are doing this. <laughs> Do the work of an evangelist. Guys, we are all called to share our faith. I wish, I wish I could say to you today that um, you know, the, five, the fivefold ministry is, is how we're going to get everybody into it. No. The fivefold ministry is for training. And he gave some to be apostles. Apostles, plant churches, prophets, evangelists. Evangelists are for events. But listen to me. Listen to me. Everybody knows that evangelistic crusades, the conversion rate that those people become disciples are less than 5%. Who, do, who knew that? Less than 5%. What does that mean? Well, say to the person, you've just been, you've just been given the work of an evangelist. Let's read this together. It's out of Romans. It says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach unless they are sent? And last Sunday night there were many feet washed in this place. There were many beautiful feet that were cleaned last Sunday. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. You are the only person 
You are the only person that, 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 that represents Jesus when you, get to, when you go to work, when you go to your place of insert. Guys, listen. I had another good conversation on Friday morning with my, in my discipleship group. And I asked one of my brothers. I said, so, you know, how do you, you, know, how do you evangelize? How do you share your faith? And, and I mean, obviously he gave me a good answer. But it wasn't the right answer. It wasn't the biblical answer. And that's why I'm sharing this stuff with you today, guys. Listen, I'm gonna, I'm, I, I think I'm losing you guys, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip the, to the chase. Listen, Friday morning is not for us. There are people that live in your street, that work with you, that have a false Jesus, they have a false gospel, they have a religion. They don't know that they lost. They don't know that Jesus Christ actually died on the cross because He loves us. And that He wanted to die on the cross so that He could save us. That He could pay the ultimate price so that He could buy us back from Satan. They don't know that. They don't know that. I mean, listen, my mom still thinks Jesus was risen, was risen spiritually, not physically. I've been this Christian for 19 years. My ma weet nie, die Heere het een fysische opstanding gehad nie. I wonder whose fault that is. And the most amazing thing, guys, about what we're going to do is, listen, if, if, if all you, if the only time you've seen people is on Tuesday nights and Sunday, you don't have a relationship with them. They can't trust you. They don't believe you. They're still waiting for you to, to disappoint them. They're still waiting for you to do what everybody else has done, and that's abuse and use them. And I want to say to you something that, that, that we don't get to choose. I think Jesus, Jesus chose. Jesus chose because he had a specific, I mean, he had to pray right through the night, and he chose his 12 disciples. But I don't believe that, that he chose them out of, you know, I, I, I like this guy because he's like me, and I like this person, but those people I don't like. No, we don't get to choose. So the first and the most important thing that we have to do is pray. Pray. Jesus said, pray. The, the, the harvest is ripe. Pray. Pray the Lord of the harvest that he would send workers. You have to pray for people. And just to get back to that conversation, so my brother said to me, no, um, um, I talked to people. I said, no, but what should, what should you do before that? No, maybe I should. No, maybe I should. No, you must pray. You must declare the name of Jesus over that person's life. You must declare the name of Jesus. You must pray for that person's salvation. You must pray for his soul. You must prepare. Listen, we, we, we always take the, um, um, the, the uh, um, parable of the sower, and we, we've got this picture that this oak just comes along and he hoys seed. Eh? I don't know if you, but I used to think that. I used to think the oak just hoys seed. That's my responsibility. Tell everybody about Jesus. You know, tell everybody the gospel. No, no, no. Have you ever heard of a farmer that just hoys seed? Well, he probably won't be a farmer for long. He's got to prepare the soil. He's got to do what he can do. How do we prepare the soil of the hearts of those who are hard for the gospel? Because we've got four types of soil. And we've got a responsibility not just to sow, but to prepare the hearts. Guys, we've got a God that loves everyone on this planet. We've got a God that sent us His Holy Spirit. We've got a God that, given, that has given us power over every demonic thing in the, on this planet. We've got a God that saves. And we're sitting there with a, with a mouth full of teeth. Misschien zal iemand anders de stop en om optel. <laughs> nee? No. Open your houses. Guys, we have to open our houses to people. Is your house, listen, my house is closed. I have to be honest with you because my life is too fast. But I'm confronted with my religious activity. I need to open my house. 
I need to be able to, when, when, when one of you who doesn't know the Lord Jesus phones me and said, I've got issues. I've got problems with what you do. And I'm going to say, come and have food. Come and eat with me. Come and dine with me. The Bible says that we should, we should be hospitable to all men. Hebrews 13 verse 2. Why? Because unwittingly we are entertaining angels. And I want to tell you something. I still believe that guy's an angel. I know I'm going to see him one day. Because he's just in my life too often. Every now and then I see him. Every now and then he's, he's in my life. And, 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 and he's in the most inopportune place that doesn't suit me. And I've got to do something for him. I don't like that. But I know he's an angel. Why is he an angel? Because God is using him to transform me. He's using me to stop living selfishly. You know, even when I was preparing yesterday, I was sitting there all alone. And I'm thinking to myself, Yo, you know, why can't I be out? Why have I got to sit here and pray and read and pray and read and pray and read? I'm going to, you know, they're probably not even going to remember what I say to them. And then Holy Spirit just comes and says to me, He just loves on me. And it's like, Lord, I'll sit here. I will sit here. And I'll pray and I'll read and I'll pray and I'll read. And even if they don't get it, it's okay. But, but Monday morning, well, Monday morning, somebody, somebody's going to say the wrong thing to me. And they're going to open a door and guess what? You've got to change your attitude. Who's got a bad attitude? I've got a bad attitude. He's not an inconvenience. He's not an inconvenience. Jesus died for him. Jesus died for her. He's not an inconvenience. And you know, when you get to share your faith, and when you get to tell somebody about what Jesus did for you and He's doing for you, guess what? It's just almost as if He saves you again. It's just almost as if He brings up all of that emotion. Like right now, I'm crying. Why? Because I'm feeling that feeling that I had the first day that I realized that He loved me so much. And, he could, and He's never stopped loving me. And even when I've got a bad attitude, He still loves me. You know, I minister to people and I, don't, and I, and I tell them, I don't want to you. I don't want to talk to you. But I have to. I don't feel like talking to you. I've had a hard day, man. I've seen 25 people already. I don't feel like speaking to you. But that love that is inside me is so much stronger than all my attitudes. I want to tell you something. That love inside me. And halfway through the, halfway through the talk of that person, it's like, you're repenting. Lord, I'm sorry. Yomariyara, please give me another one. I'll do it again. I won't have such a bad attitude. Wow, it's so awesome. And when God does a work in their hearts, when God does a work in their hearts, when you can see as you're talking to that person, you have Jesus' disciples, when he said to them, when he said to them, if you don't eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part of me. And half of his, half of this, most of the 70 left. And he said, what about you guys? Peter, John, and James, why aren't you leaving? He said, where should we go, Lord? Because you have the words of life. You have the words of life. Listen to me. Say to the person next to me, next to you, you have the words of life inside of you. And there's somebody, there's somebody, there's somebody that needs that life. There's somebody that is, that is down. There is somebody that is fed up with their life. There is somebody that's been, dis that's been disappointed through Christianity. There's somebody that has a false gospel. That person is going to just all of a sudden be in front of you at the most inopportune time. What are you going to do? I'm going to have a bad attitude. But guess what? I'm still going to be obedient. I'm still going to be obedient. Because when I'm obedient, it changes my attitude. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you don't stop there. Thank you, Lord, that even though my attitude is bad, your words are true. Your power doesn't ever change. Your power touches people. It's your power that saves. And you shall receive power from on high when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses. In Henley. In Mayerton, in Gulf Park, in Fiennichung, in Emfuleni, in Paris, in Sasselberg, until the ends of the earth. And the awesome thing, guys, listen, listen. You don't have to invite somebody to church immediately. 
just get together. Just drink coffee. Just say, listen, I want to have some, have some, have some, I want to spend some time with you. And guess what? You pre-pre them. So you get them ready. You have, you, they, they become your friends. And then only when they say to you, hey, Lester, what the kerk she in? Yes. Yes. We can't all do what Henry does. Henry can do what Henry does because Henry's unique. He irritates people until out of frustration they come to church. I don't have that gifting. But there are many people sitting here today that got irritated by me. Guess what? They saved by the Most High. Amen. Hallelujah. So you each have got a unique gifting, guys. Guys, Friday. We've got Friday. We've got Sunday. Hey, man, we've got, we've got power here. We've got a worship team. We've got the presence of God. And God, all, all God is saying to us, will you be obedient? Just make yourself available. It's a few days. Listen, the, the world says, we even think that way. We, we, we're happy. Listen, this church is full, Pastor. I can't believe how many of you are here this morning. And it's in the middle of the holiday. What's going on? Has everybody, what, did plan, or we plan, plan or do you just love Jesus? Say to the person, we love Jesus. The, the world says only, only a few people are going to come on Friday because it's the middle of the holiday and it's Easter week. And I'm saying, listen, the Lord Jesus said those that were invited didn't come. So I want you to go to the highways. I want you to go to the byways. I want you to invite those people. Listen, I want to invite Tabo because I know Tabo will come. Guess why? Because he wasn't invited. We can't sleep with a clear conscience. And feel that we're okay. But everybody else is going to hell in a handbasket. Guys, we have to have a conscience for the lost. We have to have a burden for the lost. Because if we, we, we've got to ask ourselves, do, are we in love with Jesus if we, if we don't, if, 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 if it doesn't break our hearts? I was there. I was in Israel. I was standing at the wall, the wailing wall. There are 50 Jewish men sitting there praying to a God. That has already sent the Messiah to them. And I said, okay, Lord, thank you. Because if you hadn't closed their eyes, I wouldn't be saved. So I just glorify your name this morning. I exalt you and I lift you up high and I thank you. My life, listen, my life only makes sense when I take my cross. My life doesn't make sense if I spend it on myself. My life doesn't make sense. I want to tell you something. I'm so thankful for the burden of the cross. I'm so thankful for the burden of the ministry. Because you know what? It keeps me on the straight and narrow. I prayed for each one of you. Not that my prayer is anything, but I know God is faithful. And I know God is going to put a burning in your heart. So that the cells will become what they were. And that is this incredibly powerful vehicle that's got an anointing, a drop dead anointing of the Holy Spirit. Because he said to you, he sent them out in Matthew 10. He said, listen, go. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. When last have we done that? It's not funny to raise the dead story in here. No. Maybe pray for the sick. I pray for the sick regularly. I do. And then afterwards they ask me for medication. <laughs> I'm still going to try. It's not going to stop me. It's not gonna, but it does, it does break you a little bit. You've given your best shot and they want the medication still. Let's all stand up. Amen. Practice, practice, practice. Who of you are good at practicing? Guys, imagine this. Imagine this, eh? the icebreaker is, Who er get jy jou naam met die plank geslaan met evangelisatie? Come on, that's a great icebreaker. Hey? I mean, I've done the most wackiest, wackiest things. I, I mean, I know people that have prophesied to sisters and, and you know, thought they were husband and wives. Come on, man, that's fun. Hey! You've you got to practice. You've got to practice. Listen, God sees your heart. We've got to practice. Practice, practice, practice. Practice, practice, practice. Why? Because every time 
I want to tell you something. When I knew the least scripture, when I knew the least about the Bible, there was more power flowing through my veins than there is today. You know why? Because I've become a little bit left-brained in my, in my walk. And God, but God is restoring me. Hear me. I'm becoming like a little child again. Praise God for you, my brother. I'm becoming like a little child. And I tell you, when we become like little children, guess what happens? The power of God is released into other people's lives. And guess what? I just want to tell you something. Just as a note, if you, if you think this is not fun, when you give 10 in evangelization, you get 100. I promise you this. Is, is that anybody else's experience? <laughs> Hallelujah. Man, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm so excited. I'm excited. Lord, I'm, I thank you right now for everyone. Look at these evangelists, Lord. They've just, they've, they've come today. Pastor Kubis was talking about, about warfare. Lord, see your army. See your army. This is your army. You raised us up. You saved us for a purpose. You saved us so that we could walk forth in the power of the Holy Ghost. And we thank you right now. Lord, even, Lord, I come against every demonic spirit right now that is lying to somebody in this place. I come against you in the name of Jesus. I declare Jesus over that person. And I thank you right now that you release anointing right now. I thank you that you break this, this, this yoke of religiosity, that you break this thing where we feel we have to walk in a certain way, that you just break it right now. And I thank you, Lord. Just why don't you lift your hands with me? Let's just receive right now. Let's just receive. Let's just receive. Say, Lord, use me. Use me, Lord. Use me. Take my life. It's not my life anymore. I've been crucified. With Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a praise offering. Hallelujah. So, guys, listen. Eh? Please, we, we've got a service tonight. Even if you don't come, at least send three people that you've practiced on. But preferably come because I would not have been here today if a very good friend of mine did not invite me. A very good friend of mine invited me to this church 19 years ago. And I'm every day when I think about him, I praise God that he was obedient to just asking me. God doesn't expect you, God doesn't expect you to, 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 to walk over mountains and, to, and to, 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 to grovel and to do things like that. All God asks you is, as you go, as you go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them. Teach them all things that I've commanded you. And he's got a great promise after that. He says, and lo, I am with you till the ends of time. Amen. Amen. Amen.